Okay, we're here today to demonstrate the use of the Simple Count Sperm Kit to check the motility and concentration of prepared diluted semen doses. Um, the kit includes a little mini pipette such as this, pipette tips, and special cell vision glass slide counting chambers that have uh, grid lines uh, to do the counting. Uh, today we're going to be using a microscope with a camera attached uh, to a monitor to make uh, it easier to do the video and do the counting. Uh, but you can use any microscope um, that you happen to have or we also can provide microscopes, we can provide cameras, uh, we do not provide monitors. Uh, we're also using a slide warmer. It is, uh, it is a good idea to have a good source of heat to warm your sample or to warm the uh, cell vision slide with. Um, if you don't have a slide warmer, you can use a, a simple electric heating pad. Uh, you can use um, one of those uh, chemical uh, heating pads. Uh, anything that can bring the slide up to uh, body temperature. Um, that will be very helpful, especially in uh, analyzing the motility of the sample. So I have a little test tube of semen here. Um, this is eight day old semen, actually, that we're going to take a look at. Um, so we start with pipette with a tip. We need to make sure we stir the sample. Now if you're using a bottle or tube uh, that comes from your semen supplier, you want to make sure you stir it up very, very good just immediately uh, before um, drawing the sample with the pipette. If you don't get a really good mixed sample, you're not going to get an accurate count. So, um, so good stirring is very important and sperm cells settle very quickly. So if, if you stir it, and you let it sit for a minute before you draw the sample, you need to stir it again. So, important uh, point to make. So we're stirring our sample, we remove our top here, and we're going to put going to pipette, one pipette full here. Okay, we place the tap at the top. Now we're going to load both chambers of the cell vision slide, because we're going to want to do at least two samples to get an accurate count. So here's how we load. We put a small amount right at the start, and it fills by capillary action. until the chamber is full. Okay, then we're going to load the second chamber as well. If you need to draw a second sample from the bottle to load the second chamber, that's fine, as long as you make sure you stir the sample first. So both chambers are loaded. Dispose of the tip. Uh, we need to wipe clean the entry point um, so that we have, that, so that there's no excess. If there's excess, we can get wave motion. Um, in our sample. Now since this was cold stored semen we're going to let it warm on the slide warmer for just a, a little bit of time um, so that we can get a good assessment of motility. Now when we actually put the slide on the microscope um, the very beginning portion of the of the slide you can see um, free movement uh, good motility of the sperm cells and then to do the actual counting uh, we move over to the center of the slide where you can find the grid lines and there, the sperm cells uh, may still be moving, but not uh, very much. So you really can't do a motility analysis in the center of the slide. You have to do it at the beginning portion of the slide. And we'll, and we'll demonstrate that uh, once the sample's had a, a minute here to warm up. So I'm going to go ahead and place this on the microscope. Hopefully it's warmed long enough to get a good look at the motility. Okay. So if you can see what we're doing, we're starting at the at the front of the slide and it's just starting to move it's it's warm enough to move it, it could move better if we warmed it a little bit longer but you can get the idea um, that we have pretty good motility in this sample now we're starting to see some clumping um, a few more dead cells and some foreign material that uh, is clumping up in the sample but for an eight day old sample we still probably have 80 percent motility here I can actually cheat and have the CASA scan it well, the is saying that it's 90% modal, so um, we have good motility. And you can move the slide around to get different views. And you can see that this sample is modal and is still good enough to use, even though it's eight days old, uh, based on motility. Okay? So now if we move to the center of the slide, we'll find the grid lines.
now we'll get the grid lines in focus. So we're still getting <clears throat> a fair amount of movement. Now we need these cells to hold relatively still so that we can count them. The best way to stop the motility in this case is to heat the slide to a higher temperature um, for a couple of minutes so that the cells uh, will basically dehydrate enough uh, to stop moving so that we can count them. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the slide off, put it back on the slide warmer so that we can accomplish that. I'm gonna crank the temperature up here. Now if you're using a heating pad, um, those generally heat to 45, 50 degrees centigrade naturally. So um, you have to be careful when you're trying to warm the sample just enough for motility analysis that you don't overdo it. Um, but yet for dehydrating the sample enough to, uh, to stop motility, uh, it actually works very well. So that's what we're doing with the slide warmer is uh, heating it here at, uh, at roughly 50 degrees centigrade for oh, a minute or so. Uh, to slow down that motility enough so that we can get a good count. Now, incidentally, we do also sell various types of slide warmers if someone is interested in a slide warmer. Um, it is more expensive than a, than a commercial heating pad, obviously, that you can buy at Walmart or someplace, but it's also a very nice piece of equipment um, to own. Um, another piece of equipment I can show you over here is called a, uh, a dry block warmer. Now, this is what we use to warm up uh, samples that have been stored, um, to hold samples of extender that we're going to make a dilution with to check uh, the concentration of a, or motility, both of a raw ejaculate. Um, basically, you can preset the temperature and you can place, in this case, in this block, you can put 20 different sample tubes in there. Keeps your sample warm. It's a really good way to warm samples um, for analysis, especially if they've been stored and they're cold and, and non-modal. So. Okay, we're going to come back to this. I'm going to turn this temperature back down. Good enough. And hopefully we've slowed those cells down. So now you can see I've got a little bit of floating going on. Let me look at this chamber. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> so the grid has 10 little squares uh, across and 10 little squares down, so 10, 10 by 10. And what we, what we need to count is the number of cells within each square in one row of 10. So the number of cells in one row of 10. And if we're doing it straight across or straight down, doesn't matter. We want to do two rows or two columns or one column and one row, basically two readings per chamber. And we loaded both chambers, so we'll end up with four readings. We'll average the count and we will uh, use that average to calculate our concentration. So um, generally good if you've got clumps to try to find an area that's not as clumpy. So I think we're gonna pick a row right out of the center here. Okay, so we're gonna begin to count. Now as far, we wanna count heads that are within the range and heads that are on two lines. So we usually count top and left. We don't count bottom and right. Um, in the case where we're counting across a row, we end up getting one of the center lines anyway. If we're doing it diagonally, for example, um, we would just count top and left, top and left, top and left. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and count here. Uh, here we have uh, one, and I think that is a detached head actually. We won't count the detached head. So we have one, two, and here we have three, four, five, six, seven. Here we have eight, nine, 10, 11. I'm going to move the field of view so we can count more. Here we have 12, we have some junk up here. Here we have 13, that head is completely inside the line, so that's 14. This one is on the line, so we're not counting it here. Here we have 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Here we have 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And I have three squares left to count. 
27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. So in that row of 10, we have 42 cells. Now to do this uh, accurately, we're gonna do, we would do another count in this field of view, uh, I'm sorry, in this chamber, then we would move to the other chamber on the same slide and select two more rows to count in this one, and we would average the four. Now, for purposes of this video, I'm just gonna count those 42, and it's a very simple formula. If you count 42 cells, that means there's 42 million cells per milliliter of semen in that dose. Now, most commercial doses of semen will contain between 75 and 100 milliliters of semen. So what you need to do is calculate your concentration, your count, which we had 42. You need to multiply times the volume of the semen to know your cell count. So we have 42 million per milliliter times, if it's a 100 milliliter dose, that's 4.2 billion sperm cells in a dose. Now in this case, this was an 80 mill milliliter dose, so we had 42 a million per milliliter times uh, 80 milliliters, so we have 3.36 billion cells. In other words, this dose has an appropriate amount of cells uh, at, a, at a decent motility score, even at eight days of age, to achieve pregnancy.